as I said in the YouTube community page, today I was going to bring you yet another Apple design flaw. Many of the design flaws that I've discussed in Apple products affect products from 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. However, today we're going to get to a flaw that's affecting machines from 2016, 17, and 18. I want it to be clear when I say this that it's not just pure hatred for Apple products that I do this. It's because I hope that the consumers of Apple products, when they realize that they're designed in this way, ask the company, can you do better? As a trillion dollar company that sells $3,000 machines, can you do just a little bit better than something we would expect from a first year intern? So today we're going to be going over a very common problem on the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pros with USB-C charge ports, which is no image. I want to go over the design flaw that causes no image, how it manifests itself, what it looks like, and why this is a really bad design in contrast to older machines. With many of the design flaws that I discuss here, I'm talking about things like this cap failing or this thing being placed in the wrong place and stuff where you could, okay, it's kind of understandable that this mistake could occur and it sucks that you didn't fix it after a few years, but understandable to some extent. Here, this is just objectively terrible in a way that I would like to show you. So let's go over how it is that some of the older MacBook Pros are designed when it comes to image circuitry before we get to anything else. So I'm going to open up a schematic to an older MacBook Pro. Uh, this is going to be the LCD connector on, let's say, a 2012 MacBook Pro. And this is similar to the design that was used into later years. So if we were to look at all the signals over here, on this LCD connector, you'll see that we have three volts over here, then we have a bunch of data lines, LVDS data lines, and these are all data lines that are going to be somewhere between one and three volts, and then all the way at the end we have a not connected pin, which is typically going to be grounded, and then we have the high voltage of LCD backlight. So LCD backlight is typically going to be somewhere between 26 and 50 volts, that's a high voltage line, and you typically want to separate that from your low voltage data lines. This is a Basic, basic principle in design. I'm sure someone like Dave Jones over at EEV Blog, who you should check out, could definitely explain this in more depth and detail than I can. So let's take a look at the screen circuit in a 13-inch 2015-16 MacBook Pro before the touch bar. So we have all these DisplayPort image lines over here. Very similar layout to where you had the LVDS lines separate from the power lines. Then you have a gr few ground pins over here and the ground pins are going to be separating the image data lines from the 5 volts the screen needs to work. And then up here, you're going to have a 5 volt data line for the backlight circuit. You have a not connected pin, which is going to be grounded. And then after the grounded pin, you have LCD backlight. So same thing as is true from the 2012 model to the 2015 model is that you have separation between your data lines down here, which are low voltage lines, and your 39 to 40 low volt backlight line. Now let's take a look at how it is the newer MacBook Pros are designed. So this is going to be what I have on my desk. So this over here is a MacBook Pro touch bar from 2016-17. This is the LCD connector which is going to be attaching to the screen. Now let's take a look at what that looks like on the board view software. If we were to find the LCD connector on the schematic, you'll see that over here we have a backlight pin on pin 43. See this? PPV out SO LCD backlight. That's going to be somewhere between 38 to 50 volts. And right next to it, with no separation, no ground pin, no nothing, you have display port aux channel. Now let's take a look at where DisplayPort aux channel is going to be going to. That goes to a MUX chip on the other side of the board. See this? So this is a MUX chip. Uh, the purpose of the MUX is to take the graphics from the Intel integrated within the CPU and then the graphics from the AMD or the NVIDIA chipset and switch between them seamlessly so that when you're switching between the Intel integrated graphics and the high definition uh, discrete graphics card that you don't see messing up on the screen or you don't have to reboot to change graphics chips so you don't need like a physical switch to do it. That's the purpose of the MUX. That is going to be analyzing the image for both of them. So if we look over here, you'll see that the data line, which is typically somewhere between 1 and 3 volts, is sitting right next to the 40 to 50 volt backlight line with no pin in between. There's no separation there. Now you may think that's not a big deal. What could possibly happen if you have a 40 to 50 volt power line right next to a 1 to 3 volt data line on a micro connector? Well, 
this is what happens. Let's bring that up in the microscope so you can see why this is some of the dumbest design I've ever seen. So if we look at this cable, you can see where there is burning in the corner. Look at that. See that? No good. That is where things are jumping around. That is in the original cable. Now, you may say, this is not a big deal, Lewis. You can just replace the MUX chip. It's easy to, you just have to replace this one chip, and then everything's fine. Easy breezy, beautiful cover girl, as that commercial from 20 years ago that I can't get out of my head would say. But what about the machines that don't have a discrete graphics chip? What about the A1708 and A1706 13-inch MacBook Pro? Glad you asked. Let's check out what those look like on the schematic and board view over here. All right, so we're just going to take a look at the display connector over here. Same terrible, awful design. You have right over here, you have backlight line right next to display port line. And let's see where this goes to. Now remember, this only has one graphics chip, not two. So that display port line is going to go straight to the CPU. So what happens on this machine when there's any teeny tiny malfunction, any sort of thing that's going to make the voltage go from this pin over here to this pin over here? You s yes, you send 40 volts straight to your CPU, and you destroy the CPU. These CPUs cost anywhere from $150 to $450, depending on which one you got in your machine. Further, they're not available to people like me. If I want to get a CPU, the best thing that I'm going to get is a CPU that somebody in China ripped off of a donor board, most likely destroyed in the process, which is why even if you have the $7,000 machine to replace a CPU, good luck getting one for a touch bar. So yes, Apple designed a machine in a manner where if there's any teeny tiny malfunction, rather than that 40 to 50 volt power line going to ground as a safety, it's going to send that 40 to 50 volts straight to your CPU. All because they didn't decide to put a pin in between the two, as they've been doing for over 10 years now, which is the basic common sense of design. I'm sure Dave Jones at EV Blog could talk more about why this is a thing, and how even first-year engineering students would be taught something like this, yet for some reason, a multi-trillion dollar company has decided to just make machines that kill their CPUs. So if you have a touch bar that has no image, no backlight, just nothing like that, it's most likely because your CPU got 40 to 50 volts. And you can check your screen cable to get an idea of whether this happened, because when that happens, when that CPU gets that little shock of 40 to 50 volts, it's very easily visible. Now, when this happens to the 13-inch machines, there's honestly not much we can do, because with the 13-inch machines, again, you need to replace the CPU, and we cannot get those. With the 15-inch machines, there is hope, and you are able to replace a chip called the MUX chip. So the first diagnosis that we do on the 15-inch machines to see if there's even any sort of hope of it is we like to compare what the image that we get on the internal screen to what it is we get uh, from the USB-C out. So... I'm going to check that here. So let's see what it is that we get on the on the screen here. So I'm going to plug this thing in so you can see what type of image we get. And I'm going to give it a minute. As can be seen, no picture. Not just no backlight, no picture, no nothing, no screen activation, totally invisible. Now I'm going to unplug the machine. And I'm going to unplug the screen in the machine. And we're going to see what happens if we plug it into a microscope adapter. So this is an HDMI cable. Just get the okay. I'm gonna take this, plug the HDMI over here, and let's see what it is we get on the screen. Image. As you can see, this has the capability to send an image to an external screen but not an internal screen. And that's because within the MUX, the circuit to cr send the image to the internal screen has gotten 50 volts sent to it as a result of this, this lov lovely design here. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that MUX, and we're going to replace it with a new one. And by we, I mean most likely Paul, since I'm probably going to fuck up reballing it and ask him to save me. He's a good guy. He, gets, he deserves more credit. I believe you can actually buy this chip off of Mouser. Let's see if you can get this thing off of Mouser. And here we go. So it looks like you can actually get this chip off of Mouser. 
and soon maybe even off of store.rossmangroup.com. All right, non-stocked call for quote. Th- that this means something special. So non-stocked call for quote means that most likely Apple is being all jealous, like jealous ex-girlfriendy, and saying, "I don't want you se- talking to nobody else. I don't want you selling this to anybody but us." But this is made by NXP, and it looks like less- so. This is probably going to be something similar to like the ISL six two five nine, where again, like good luck finding stuff like this. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're never non-stocked. Yeah, see that, see that, that that that's Apple right there. That's fixing Apple products. Uh, the chips, they are they are very jealous ex girlfriendy when it comes to stuff like that. So, but it looks like there are other sellers, and this is definitely going to be something that we're going to be stocking soon on store.rossmangroup.com. We're going to sell what Mouser refuses to, and uh, now there is a little bit of trickiness here. Is that this chip is located between the CPU and the GPU? So you want to not burn your CPU or your GPU while you're doing this. So just a little bit of skill building. So I'm going to have a I'm going to use a high-tech heat sink over here which is going to be a metal spudger with rubber rubber surrounding it like that. And we're going to use that to cover so that I can remove that mux. I'm going to lower my air a little bit. I'm not going to use 120 air like I usually would. Ow. Enjoy a shot of Jägermeister for this great content. Thank you very much. I'm going to try to put it towards something a little bit more nutritious. Doing my best to drink less. Eat less. Got to get back in shape. When you leave Apple, don't reply to her text or email, says Mr. Name I Can't Say on stream. How's it going, Chris Long? Now remember, I'm not going to pull up on this ship until I see that it can move left and right. Because if I'm pulling up on it, I'm probably going to pull it up while the joint is still half cold. So now I see, since I was squeezing the chip hard, that it was able to move left and right. So I'm going to pull it off. And there you go. Those are the balls under my chip. And also, this is the proper orientation of the chip. First thing to do is just uh, suck up all my balls there. You know, Paul, if we can buy this chip pre-balled, this actually, this is not going to be a shit repair. So I was thinking that we work out a deal where I was kind of thinking, I do the 15-inch ones, you do the 13-inch ones? What do you say? No deal. No deal. <laughs> What's wrong with that? No deal. Why? Because. Because they're smaller. I figured it would save space on your desk because you don't want your desk to be all cluttered and stuff. I don't mind my desk being a little bit cluttered. I have a Zalmao over here. <laughs> a giant Zalmao right here. All right, so we got a nice amount of Amtec NC559 V2TF flux, and we're just going to run a solder ball over there, pick up all of that junky lead-free solder that I don't want to use, and gently touch the board. Not enough that we're pulling off the, the covering and the coating off of the traces, but just enough that we have gotten rid of all the lead-free junk. So now we're going to take another board with another MUX chip,
Look at Paul's workmanship here. Are we allowed to bash this board to pieces if after all this work it doesn't have an image on the internal screen? Oh, Apple logo! Apple logo! Okay. All right, so this is the Apple logo, which means we have fixed the issue by replacing the mux. It is 8 o'clock. Yep. Off the clock. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And as always, I hope you learned something.